Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Do you like my hum? <laughs> Welcome to Palm Sunday, everybody. It is a great day as Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem. We know this becomes a difficult week for us as people of faith. And we invite you to gather and to celebrate us with us for lots of different events. Hosanna! Hosanna! All right. Come back to me. You ready? Good. All right. We have a couple of special announcements. Let's start with Steve Hutchins and some news on the Saturday morning men's group. Steve, come on up. Number two, Jordan. There you go. Get back close. Good morning, all. Um, I lead the Saturday morning men's fellowship. We, uh, we meet in the patio room at 7.30 on Saturday mornings. We meet for approximately an hour, discuss selected books and topics of religious connotation. The church generously provides coffee, and usually one of the men, men's group will provide donuts or munchies for our group. We sh currently are finishing the book As Kingfishers Catch Fire by Eugene Peterson. The book is a compilation of many of Peterson's sermons and his career as pastor, uh, with a profound topic in each sermon. Peterson is also the renowned author of the Message Bible. We'll be starting our new book, The Case for Christ, by Lee Strobel on Saturday, April 20th, uh, again at 7.30 in the morning. We will be starting a slightly new format as we are incorporating a DVD and study guide to encourage discussion uh, on the many questions that will arise as we read and review this book. Each DVD clip is approximately 15 minutes where we will review the questions presented and discuss what we've learned in the book and how it may have affected our beliefs and opinions about Jesus' life, birth, death, and resurrection. Lee Strobel started his investigation as a, an atheist and through his investigation became a follower of faith in Christ. The details of his investigation and the thoroughness of his queries will provide answers to those of you who may have doubts about whether Jesus lived, actually died, and was resurrected. As you would be a jurist in a court trial, you will hear the evidence and you will be able to reach your verdict. We welcome you to join the Men's Fellowship in our journey through the book, Case for Christ. Uh, I'd like to thank Steve Meldy and the church for the opportunity and the support for our group. Thank you very much. Thank you. So every Saturday, uh, gentlemen, we invite you to come be with us. You'll notice in your bulletin lots of different uh, inserts. There's an insert about the one great hour of sharing. It's a special offering that we give you the opportunity to be a part of if you so choose. It goes out throughout the world in helping to end hunger and other issues of people in need. So you can read more about that and be a part of that if you'd like. Notice also the envelope in there about Easter flowers. Those need to be in today. You can uh, fill that out, drop your money in there and, so that we can dedicate flowers next Sunday in memory or honor of somebody uh, and put them in the offering plate today as we put that together for the bulletin this week. This is Holy Week. And it begins today with Palm Sunday. We will be gathering again Thursday evening, and I really encourage you to come Thursday evening in the sanctuary, 7 o'clock, for our traditional Tenebrae communion service. This is a service where the lights get dimmer and dimmer all through the service, and we end in darkness with the tolling of the bell. And it really is a very moving service and will allow you to really move through deeper in that story of Jesus in this last week of his earthly life so that on Sunday next week when we celebrate the resurrection you will really know the value of celebrating what God has done for us when he raised Jesus from the dead. So that is Thursday evening at 7 o'clock over in the sanctuary service with communion. Resurrection morning we will gather out on the patio 6 o'clock weather permitting and so far it's looking like the weather forecasters are telling us it's going to be a great day. Uh, dress for the weather. You're going to want to bring a sweater. It's 6 o'clock. It's still kind of chilly out there. Uh, but we get to watch the sunrise over the solar system uh, and the mountains. Uh, and 
uh, sing our praise out to the neighborhood. There'll be a light breakfast following that, and then we celebrate our journey to Jerusalem. At 9.30, we're opening the doors to the entire community. Uh, and so we are expecting lots of people who don't usually come to CPC to join us. So we're inviting you to help us welcome them. There's lots of ways you can do that. You can dress up in a period costume. Those costumes are down at the end of the grass quad. Carol Gamble is raising her hand over here, um, and she'll help you get fitted into a costume that you can wear next Sunday. It gives just kind of that extra feel that we've all come to Jerusalem to figure out what's going on with this Jesus and his resurrection event. Um, you can greet people you don't know and wear your name tag and let people know that you're a part of the church. And if they're not wearing a name tag, simply introduce yourself. They might have been a charter member, but that's okay. Uh, you'll at least get to know them. But welcome new people into the church on that Sunday. We're gathering 930, lots happening. Uh, great food, great music in here, uh, a big petting zoo out here. A Clydesdale, because I'm sure they had Clydesdales in Jerusalem long ago, um, is coming to ride. There are activity tables. And then we'll gather in the gym at 1045 for our worship experience that will include a fabulous pageant of the stranger at the manger who finally comes to find Jesus. And does he meet him? You're going to have to come and find out. Uh, following that service is a gigantic egg hunt out on our grass quad. <coughs> Um, and we just really encourage you to come and be with us for all of that. One of the days that I could use your help is Friday, this Friday. Uh, we'll be picking up flowers at the store at 9 o'clock. So if you've got vehicles that we can put boxes in uh, or trailers uh, or the backs of trucks, that would be great. Call the church office. We'll let you know where we're meeting. And we're meeting at 9 o'clock Friday. The rest of you come on over here at 9.30 because then we have to unbox all the flowers, set them up on the stage, get all of that ready for that event and that worship experience over there. So Friday morning's a big setup morning. If you're available, we'll take your help. All right. We have a great celebration today. And that is we have 12 people so far this year who have indicated a desire to become members of our church. And so they'll be meeting with our session leadership team this morning uh, right after worship, but we're going to welcome some of them into worship this morning as members. So uh, some of them are here at this service. Some will be at second service. Joining us at second service are going to be Charlene Hauer, Sally and John Yauch, and Monica Russell. Uh, but the others are here with us this morning, and I'm going to invite you as I call your names to come join me up on the stage so that we can welcome you. Dennis and Shelley Crosby. Bob and Chris McCleary, are you here at 8.30? Nope, they're coming for 1045. Okay. Debbie and Mark Teeth, come all the way up. Sorry. And Tammy Gonzalez. Come all the way up. And if you'll come down, we'll make room for everybody. Here we go, Tammy. This is a great day for all of us. Um, there's no requirement at CPC that you become a member to attend, to participate to be a full life of this church. We welcome everybody. To me, it's extra special, though, when people choose to make their membership here. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we stand up for in our lives, a lot of stuff that we commit ourselves to. And what you all do today is you commit yourself to growing in your faith with this folk, with this church family. And you proclaim to the public who and whose you are. And to me, that's incredibly important because of all the things that we can stand up for. To stand up for God and Jesus as our Lord and Savior is the most important thing we could ever do. And you proclaim that not only on your behalf, but on all our behalf. And you inspire us who sometimes after a while, who sometimes after a while get a little comfortable in our faith and we just sit at our tables and sing the song. But folks, it's important to tell people who it is you believe in and who it is you're following. And that's what you all do for us today. So we ask you these questions of faith. Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? And do you trust in him? And do you intend to be his disciple, to obey his word and to show his love? And will you be a faithful member of this church, giving of yourself in every way? And will you seek the fellowship of the church wherever you may be? Let's pray. 
Gracious and holy God, thank you for these who stand before us on your behalf to give their lives to you again, to proclaim their faith and their trust in you as their Lord and Savior. What an incredible gift. May their words of faith inspire us to share ours. And may we continue to grow as a church family, reaching out into this community and out into the world to share the good news of who you are in Jesus the Christ. May we together proclaim our Hosanna to you. All in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Welcome. 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 I'm coming back. Welcome. And everybody, uh, I love them dearly, but you need to know these are my next door neighbors. Uh, and so it just gets extra fun for me. Uh, today uh, to know that and to have uh, lived next door to them for 22 and a half years um, and to celebrate with you in a church family is special. And it's been so fun to get to know your stories of who you are, um, so new to church life and, and coming into this to uh, inspiring your family and, and uh, a beautiful family of five grown kids um, and five grandchildren. Um, have been worship leaders in other churches. We are bringing gifts here, uh, folks, that are going to grow our church family. Let's welcome them this morning. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. All right, come sit down. Oh, before they go, hang on. Now they get real name tags. Okay. You'll notice those of you who've actually become members have the year you joined uh, on your name tag. Our hope with all of that is that as you get to know each other, come on, stay on. As you all get to know each other or you don't know each other, um, you might look and say, oh, I joined that year. Or, oh my gosh, you've been here a long time. Or, hey, you must be new, you just joined this year. So make sure you're using each other's name tags. Thank you. Let's take a moment now to get ourselves re-centered. I invite you to take a nice deep breath and to take some time just in some quiet prayer to be on your own with God and open yourself to God who's already open to you. Let's pray. Palm Sunday starts with brightness. Hosanna, which means praise. Holy heck, look, something's coming. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then suddenly in the middle of the week, the story turns dark. Until a week from today, when the greatest brightness emerges from the darkness of the world. Come this morning. Be a part of this Holy Week as we praise and honor God who loved us so much that he gave this only begotten Son that we might forever be with this God. Come, let's praise our God and let's rise. <laughs> In a world with no direction, you are the way, you are the way. In darkness and deception, you, you are, are the, the truth, truth, you are the truth. For the dying with no hope inside, Jesus, you're the only light. 
You are the truth, you are the truth For the dying with no hope inside Jesus, you're the only light You are the way, you are the truth You are the light, our everything You are the way, you are the truth You are the light, our everything Our Lord, our Savior We praise you, Jesus Christ you are the way, you are the truth, you are the light. Okay. Hosanna. All right, get back. You may be seated. Let's pray together. <coughs> Thank you, God, for moments when we can just simply praise your name. When we can shout, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Because you, the greatest of everything in all the world, are so fully present in Jesus. We know that now. We wonder if we would have known that then. But thank you. Thank you for loving us, even when we don't know how to love you. Thank you for giving us when we forget to forgive others. Thank you for giving us grace when we deserve condemnation. <coughs> Lord, you know us. We're a pretty good people. And yet we still make some mistakes. Sin is still a part of our lives. And it draws us away from the faithfulness we want in you. So this Holy Week, help us to feel your spirit in our lives, guiding us closer and closer to you. Because we know on that third day you raised Jesus from the dead. You proclaimed to us that nothing could separate us from your love in him. And though we don't understand it, we're sure grateful for it. So help us live lives that deserve it, that proclaim our faith in you, now and forever, in Jesus' name. Accept now these gifts that we offer. May they continue the ministry and mission not only of this church, but of the greater church all across this world that people may learn to shout Hosanna to you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
You know, the world can clap. Christians should shout amen. 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 From Matthew's perspective of the story in chapter 21. When they had come near to Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When they entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. People love parades. Right? We love parades. Didn't you grow up watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade on TV? So glad that you were nice and warm, tucked in your home, watching it on TV. Right? Soon after that got really popular, you could watch Christmas morning parades all across the world. It's amazing. When I grew up in Scottsdale, we had Parada del Sol Day, Parade of the Sun. No school, and all of Scottsdale will go down and line Scottsdale Road and watch the people riding their horses, pretending to still be cowboys. <laughs> Bands. Friends were in the street. Friends were along the street, waving to each other, exalting one while the others were lower. It was kind of this whole weird experience, but... It was fun, and most all of Scottsdale showed up for it back in those days, in the mid-1900s. <laughs> when we moved to an island community in Michigan uh, for my first call with the church, in the springtime they, ha they had what was known as the Azalea Festival, when the azaleas were starting to bloom, and they were gorgeous. There were parades down Macomb Street, right down the main street. Deb and I had a convertible. So we got to drive our convertible down the road, waving to all our parishioners. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> I've always imagined what the parades would be like for Mardi Gras in New Orleans, right? Uh, there's a lot of sermon illustrations there, I am sure, right? Here in Tucson, of course, we have the rodeo parade. Um, and lots of people show up to watch what uh, is touted as the largest, longest, non-mechanical parade uh, in our country. Uh, when we first moved back to Tucson years ago, we would take our kids down to the parade, and then we soon learned that the better thing to do was to go to the parade in Disneyland uh, over Rodeo Weekend. And so uh, we would take a little break and take our kids to Disneyland and see everybody with their U of A shirts, and it was like a parade, <laughs> right? Um, Disney caught on to the parade. If you go to Disneyland, there's two or three parades a day themed differently, and people stop. They get out of their lines for the rides, and they go and they watch these parades. It's People love parades. And in this final week of Jesus' life, he enters into the very difficult city of Jerusalem, the center where the main temple of faith was. And he entered, as he did, suddenly a parade started to form around him. Imagine it as people took off their outer jackets and laid them down onto the ground before him. They 
cut branches from trees, which probably were not palm trees, right? Probably olive branches and things like that were laid down. As if it were a red carpet, something life-giving that they were laying down, those important things that they needed, that they laid down before this one that they were exalting, who came riding in not just on a donkey, but on the foal of a donkey. I love how Matthew writes that. It wasn't just a donkey. It was a donkey baby. Now, what do you know about donkeys? They're very stubborn. And they only move when they want to move, right? And you can spank them all you want. They're going to spank you back. And they're still going to do what they want to do. All right? So they're harder to ride and harder to train than a horse would be. So Jesus rode in, according to Matthew, not just on a donkey that's stubborn, but on what? A colt of a donkey, a foal of a donkey, which means, most likely, if you've never tried to break a horse in, you've never tried to break a donkey in. So this is most likely a young donkey who had never been ridden. Think about that, cowgirl. You ever seen YouTube videos when they first try to ride a horse? The horse is not happy. Right? And there's a lot of bucking going on. Bless you. It's my job, don't worry. (laughs) So Matthew does this wonderful thing with just one little phrase of a word that you'll miss if you're not really paying attention. It's not just a stubborn old donkey. It's a brand new donkey that's really stubborn, that's really strong, that really wants its own will. And Jesus says, go get it. And if the owner of the donkey, imagine you being the owner of the donkey, says to you, what are you doing with my donkey? Because I'm sure that's what they do as you're stealing their donkey, right? (laughs) What you doing with my donkey? Jesus says, just tell them the master needs it, and they'll let you have it. And they did. And he got on the donkey, the foal of a donkey. And rode like a king. And people were waving branches and laying down their jackets and cutting branches from the neighbor's tree. (coughs) And laying them down before him. And shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! And can't you just imagine other people who didn't know Jesus saying, (laughs) Ha ha! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord riding a foal of a donkey. I mean, that was no place of honor. No position that you would want to be on. Wouldn't you want the great stallion to ride? Not the foal of a donkey? But that's how Jesus came in. And people love a parade, and as they're waving their palms, Jesus spent the next week telling them what to do with their palms. Because they had missed the significance of riding in on the foal of a donkey. We do a lot of things with our palms, don't we? few things I won't show you. We do a lot of things here in the church with our palms, don't we? We greet one another. Hello, I'm Steve. Mark, nice to meet you. We do a lot of things with our palms. Mark, that's a lovely place where you're sitting. Um, And usually that's where I sit. (laughs) Is it where you take over, neighbor? What, nobody? Oh, thank you. Uh, no. It happens here even at CPC. That sometimes when somebody's new and they get here before you do and they're in the seat you usually sit, we use our palms.
to move them. Instead of perhaps saying, hey, Mark, I'm Steve. I'm glad to see you. I usually sit here. Hang on one second. Is it okay if I join you? You see, the people missed the point of when Jesus rode not only in on a donkey, but on a foal of a donkey, where other people made fun of him, despite them yelling, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. He humbled himself before them, and he wasn't in the parade to be praised. He was in the parade to teach them what to do with their palms. Teach them to live a life of humility amongst others and welcome them into a relationship with God instead of pull them out of it. You have them. And you have the opportunity this week to praise God and shout Hosanna with your palm. And you need to be careful about how you do that. You need to be faithful in how you do that. Faithful to the one who didn't rise himself above us, but humbled himself to be with us. And called us to follow in the same kind of footsteps. Palm Sunday. How are you waving yours? How will you wave them in time to celebrate the resurrection? And will the way you wave them show the truth of who God is in Jesus the Christ? Pray it be so. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come this morning singing our hosannas, filled with great joy, and yet realize as you humbled yourself before us, we humble ourselves before you and before each other. Thank you for allowing us to wave our palms in your name. Please, God, forgive us the ways that we've done that that have not been faithful. And help us in the week ahead to be more faithful with our palms waving them in your name, to your honor, to your glory, not to ours, and inviting others to humble themselves before you and before others. You are amazing. And though we don't deserve this gift of grace, you give it freely. Thank you. Here are our palms, O oh God. With your spirit, guide us as we wave them this week. For we come to you in Jesus' name, praying together the prayer he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
in the glory forever. Amen. Let's rise with our palms. First verse, Vicki. Get the slides right. A terrific week. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you on Thursday night at 7 for Monday Thursday and then Sunday morning 6 o'clock sunrise, 9.30 music and food, 10.45 the pageant. Watch 